Good, happy Wednesday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, State Supreme Court takes up issue of murder victims' privacy. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. The Chevrolet's Dealer of the Year offers you the most award-winning vehicles on the road today. Drive the award-winning, most dependable mid-size 2016 Chevy Malibu LS for only $219 a month with no money down. Make it McMulkin. It's a case that could have national implications on a crime victim's right to privacy. Lawyers for the family of murder victim Lizzie Marriott and state prosecutors are asking the state Supreme Court to keep information about her sexual past private during the appeals process, just as it was during the trial of Seth Mazalia, who is serving a life sentence for Marriott's death. She's not gone. She was murdered. And whether the victim was murdered or not makes no difference to victims' rights and the privacy and uh, the privacy and respect interests that the victim's right and rape sh the rape shield laws protect and uh, the purpose that they serve. Marriott, a 19-year-old University of New Hampshire student, was killed in 2012 and her body was never found. Mazalia was convicted in 2014. Prosecutors are asking the Supreme Court for several things, including closed-door oral arguments before the state's highest court something that's never been done before. In the appellate court, and this is my fundamental point, in the appellate court, privacy is not free. There is a cost in terms of accountability, as Justice Lynn referred to, that the public will never know whether this court's ruling was right or not. But lawyers for the Marriott family say releasing personal, private information victimizes them all over again and sends a bad message to others who may hesitate to come forward. So is our court system going to be open to victims and a place that they can access justice, or are we going to close the doors to that? We cannot have a system that forces victims to sacrifice everything just to seek justice. The case is under advisement and no further hearing dates have been set. Reporting live, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that report. No contamination from materials found in Keene classroom. Officials determined Wednesday that potentially hazardous materials found in a science classroom at Keene High School tested negative for any type of contamination. Keene police and fire crews responded to the school around 11 a.m. when staff members noticed the potential hazardous material. Officials said it was an isolated incident, so they decided an evacuation of the building was not necessary. Any affected students or staff members were moved to a different part of the building. Officials said the school day continued as normal with dismissal at normal time. Dismissal was a normal process aside from a slight modification to where the buses typically arrive at the school to pick up students for dismissal, officials said. After school activities will take place as normal, officials said. Tallahassee police officer shares her side of the story in Terrence Cutcher's shooting. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Disney World Resort. Unforgettable happens here.
And as you see, this is a video of when the shooting occurred. Tallahass Police Officer Betty Shelby identified as the officer who shot 40-year-old Terrence Kutcher on Friday night has offered her side of the story in the fatal encounter. In dash cam and helicopter video released by police, Kutcher appears to have his hands up moments before he is shot by Shelby. Shelby's attorney, Scott Wood, maintains that Kletcher refused to follow more than two dozen commands and that he reached into the open window of the car before Shelby perceived a threat and shot him. Stocks rally after Fed keeps rates unchanged. NASDAQ post record closing high. U.S. stocks closed sharply higher on Wednesday after the Federal Reserve's kept interest rates unchanged, but hinted at the possibility of one rate hike later this year. ISIS suspected of mustard attack against U.S. and Iraq troops. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. U.S. officials are telling CNN that the Pentagon suspects ISIS launched a chemical weapons attack against U.S. and Iraqi troops. Barbara Starr is at the Pentagon to tell us more. Barbara, uh, where did this happen? What chemical agent was allegedly used? And most importantly, how are the troops doing? Jake, uh, for CNN is the first now to report this development. The most important thing, no U.S. troops hurt in this, but some did go through decontamination as a precaution. It happened on Tuesday, but now as we speak, this chemical shell is being tested by the U.S. military to see exactly what was in it. This shell landed on an airbase in northern Iraq where U.S. and Iraqi troops are operating, getting ready to try and fight to take Mosul back from ISIS. The shell landed. U.S. troops went out to look at the shell. They saw something suspicious. They tested it. The first test came back positive for mustard agent. They are testing it further. Why do they believe it's ISIS? ISIS is up in that area. They are desperate to hold on to Mosul. They want it to prove to the world that they have, in their view, a caliphate, an Islamic state. ISIS has used this type of mustard agent before against civilians. A lot of concern about what is happening here. U.S. troops are, do have and have had protective gear against this type of attack. And again, the most important thing, Jake, no U.S. troops exhibiting any signs of exposure to the agent, even as the U.S. trying to, tries to figure out exactly what did transpire here. Jake? Okay, and there you have it on that report. Portion of the major Degon Expressway shut down due to suspicious package. A portion of the major Degon Expressway is shut down in the Bronx after a suspicious package was found near the roadway. The package was found at 5.35 p.m. near East 134th Street in Alexander Avenue and Mott Haven Station, which runs under the highway. The Major Degon is closed from the RFK Bridge to Wilson Avenue Exit 2. Police are sending the bomb squad to the scene. We'll keep you updated on this breaking news. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday night. Good night, everyone. Bye.